uh, while we're uh, turning, I want you to open to uh, probably uh, uh, Exodus chapter 3, and uh, we'll start there this morning, Exodus 2 and 3, long in there somewhere. But uh, don't forget to pray for people that, that are, are uh, down and out, down and out. I'm telling you, there's people in this world in bad, 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 bad shape, y'all. I'll choose this one, Bill. Hey. Amen. Exodus chapter number two uh, this morning, and I'm going to go over this uh, uh, pretty quick in the preaching service. So we'll uh, we'll uh, go a little slower here this morning. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. All right. Uh, Let's uh, get in our Bibles here this morning, Exodus chapter number number uh, two. Uh, when the Lord, this is when the Lord uh, called Moses, and uh, chapter chapter three actually, and and then, all right, Exodus three. All right. Now, this morning. Uh, There'll be thousands and thousands of preachers uh, begin to talk about, uh, obviously, the world is in, in a war this morning. And uh, it, it's very, very sad. It's very, very heartbreaking. And uh, our, my, first, my first thought, you know me, my first thought is for all those little kids that are having to suffer because of men's wickedness and sin. I'm, I'm, we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands. Not just Israelis, but on the Palestinian side also. Little innocent kids that, that have done nothing. I mean, they don't know. Uh, they're, they're just born into this mess like we all was. And, you know, sometimes you feel very blessed and privileged to be born here in America. And God's been mighty good to us. But the problem with America is we take it for granted. We really, really do. We take for granted our freedom this morning. Most of you this morning... You didn't even worry about it. You know, I don't know, let's go to church, walk in, sit down. We had no thought that maybe you might get shot or might, uh, you know, it's getting worse, but you know, you know what I'm saying. We, we take for granted our freedoms in this country just unbelievably. And, and that, that has caused us to have a sort of a, of a, of a apathetic backslid attitude uh, to where we don't really appreciate what the Lord's done for us. And the Bible talks a lot about that in Revelation. It talks about Christians or, or the church there in Revelation about going back to your first love. Um, uh, it, it don't go to your first love. And, and I'll, I'll admit, we're, we're natured. Our nature is to let things wear down. Just like when you get a new car. Or, you know, not a new car, but new, new to you. You know what I mean? I mean, if you get a 2017, that's new. 2015, new. Uh, to, uh, to but uh, uh, when you get a, when you get in your car, boy, you just look at it and you drive it and you and you, you know you just think about it and that's human nature. You want you don't want no dirt and you don't want no, nobody's eating in this car. You tell the whole family that that lasts about two weeks, right? if that long, uh, you know, and uh, and and that thing. And then uh, it's like uh, it's like and next thing you know, you go out there and hop in that car and go down the road and you don't even realize what you're driving most of the time. You don't. We don't. We're natured that way. Uh, you people that uh, I know people. I don't know anybody, but I, I'm, I guess maybe I do. Want, but live like live on the ocean or with an ocean view, and all of us are thinking, "Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be something to have ocean front? You can just look out and see the ocean." Do you know you check with people that live there a few years? They say we go. I've had people say we go for weeks and don't even see it. Oh, I wouldn't, Brother Danny, if I lived there. I'd go out every morning. I'd sit and watch the waves come in. No, you wouldn't. You would for a while. But we're natured. It's like the mountains. Have you sat and stared at the mountains lately? Now, you know, it's that time of year. I love the mountains. I, they're beautiful. You know, and where peak is, uh, they're saying it's a little late because it's been so warm and, and dry. But, and, and, and I have got in my older age to where when I drive in, I do look at them. But when I was young growing up, I'd, I drove here, lived here, you know, you go years and don't even notice her up there. And you get your mind on other things. And it's the same way of being saved. 
When you get saved, boy, it's it the whole world. I mean, nothing means more. It's everybody got to get saved. You know, you're gonna win everybody. You're crazy. You don't get saved. Get saved. I want you to get saved today. Uh, so they wait on us for years, and we expect everybody to get saved next. And that's normal. That's good. Really, it should be like that. But my goodness, they say when you when when you're when you're young, you have a lot of heat and no light. When you get old, you got a lot of light, and no heat. And that's the same way a Christian does. When you get when you when you're young, you got a lot of zeal and no knowledge. But the problem is, by the time you get some knowledge, your zeal runs out. And if you got to have one or the other, you'd probably be better off to have that first zeal and win some souls than to get to where you know everything and don't do nothing. You'd be better off not to know a lot. i say it again. Say amen. You'd be better off not to know a lot and know you're saved and try to get other people saved than to know a lot and not do nothing. Amen. True. Watch out. Beware for that trap, the devil. I know. I know preachers, all they do, all they do is say, I stay in my study eight hours a day. Well, good, I'm proud of you. But you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Um, like old Arthur Pink, he wrote all them books, you know. They said his book's about that thick. And he said, Jack Howell said God ought to read his books. Uh, because he's got stuff in there the Lord ain't never found out. He's just joking. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, you get, you got a lot of zeal when you first get saved. Oh, you're on fire. You go to bed. Thank you, Lord. And it's, it's it's about impossible to keep that same amount of zeal as you learn. Now you've been saved a while and you've learned that you're right and everybody else is wrong and you're the elite and you're better than everybody. You know, you get that, that stupidity, uh, all that stupid. You know, if, if we could, if you could, if we could stay fired up for God like we was the first year, Lord, we'd be dangerous. But you have to fight. You have to fight. Stay like that. You do. I do. Everybody does. Because you know, you get taken for granted. Well, I'm saved. Yeah, whatever. You washed the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, hallelujah. Man, you remember when that meant something to you? Remember when that, you remember when you thought, I'm washed the blood of the Lamb. Woo! You remember, it meant something. And it's still just as real now as it was then. It's just human nature. We are natured to sort of get used to stuff and take stuff for granted. Now, thank God we live in this country. I, I wouldn't want to live in, uh, one of them countries over there, I'll be showing you here in a little bit this morning. And I wouldn't want to live in Jordan or Lebanon or Beirut or one of them over yonder. Like that. Lord have mercy, I wouldn't want to live in a place like that. Uh, I'm glad God let me live here. But this place is not without its dangers. And our dangers are not somebody walking in the door shooting us. Our dangers are getting apathetic and have so much material things. And the world that would just get backslidden full of the devil. That's our danger. And the mind, the battle of us, we're on the mind. We're not being, we're not being thrown in jail and stuff. I mean, it might happen before it's over with, but we're not being thrown in jail for doing what I'm doing here this morning. I would be in other countries. They'd cut my head off in other countries, um, uh, you know, for doing what I'm doing this morning. But that's not our battle right now. Our battle is the devil just in your mind and torturing you. And, and making you think crazy stuff and stuff like that. But basically, I'm going to mention this again in the preaching service, but look here in Exodus chapter 3, and I want to show you something. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Lot, I preached on that before, the burning bush. and that, it, kept, it burned, but it wasn't consumed. It just kept on and on and on. And um, a great sight. Now, before reading further, I want, I, want, I want you to listen to something. There is in the Bible, it's an established principle in the Bible, what we call the law of first mention. And it ain't for everything, but there is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about, uh, there is a law of first, of first mention, which means this. Many times, the first time a word or a town or a, a deed is mentioned in the Bible carries all the way through history. Uh, 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 and it's, a, it's, it's mine, it's absolutely... It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. There's books wrote on it, books that thick. And some of them stretch a little bit. Some of them, I think, 
it's a stretch to believe them. They some of them so obvious you can't miss it. Like the word beer, I guarantee you they ain't a bootlegger or they ain't one of these people that sell alcohol in this city this morning that knows where the word beer started from and what it what it means. First time it's ever mentioned in the Bible. Numbers 21. There's a beer. There's a well. It's a well. Drink a well. People say, hey, drink a well dry. That's the first mention of the word beer. Of course, they don't, they don't know that because they don't study the Bible. Uh, you say, well, that's coincidence. No, it keeps happening over and over and over and over. Uh, the number 13. Uh, the, the 13. As you know, all these many, many years. Friday was Friday 13th. Halloween's coming up. All that. You know, the first time the number 13 mentioned, uh, it was over in Genesis uh, 14, I believe it said, they served Chedo Laomer for 12 years, and in the 13th year, they rebelled. And that's something. That's something. So from then on, 13 has been associated with rebellion. What happens to your kids as soon as they get about 13? Well, you said, that stuff starts coming out, boy. That rebellious spirit starts coming out. I know people said, I'm going to raise the perfect kids. Yeah, well, you think you are. You think you are. I hope you do. You'll be the first person to have. Uh, but uh, uh, they, they get a mind of their own. They get a mind of their own. They start coming back at you a little bit. You think, uh-oh, what have I, what have I got here? Uh, there's something about that number 13. And, that, and that, I, we can do a whole Bible study on that number 13. I mean, it's obvious. It's, I've done it before. It'll, it starts getting spooky, <laughs> no pun intended, after a while. Uh, the, the connotations of that number 13. Uh, 13 colonies, 13 stars and stripes on a dollar bill, the 13 arrows in the eagle's hand, the 13 stripes on the flag. Well, well, that represent, well maybe it does. Uh, it's all, all over that money. Love of money is what? The root of all evil. And it's just on, 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 on. 13 is uh, like Halloween, 31st, All Saints Eve, backward 13. And then all through the, all through the, the covenants of the witches and all that old Halloween stuff is just, it's just over and over and over and over. So much that for many, many years, there's no 13th gate at the airport. There's no 13th floor in the hospital. There's no 13th uh, room. You know, nobody wants to stay at number 13. Some of them have let up on that a little bit because they think it's superstitious. And, and that is really, I mean, if you fill your car up and it's exactly $13, that don't mean nothing. It means you got a gallon and a half. Uh, but, uh, but it don't mean anything. It don't mean anything. Uh, well, you got about. You might have got three gallons, or two and a half, two and a half, uh, out of out thirteen dollars. But that don't mean you're cursed that day or nothing like that. But that law of first mention is all the way through there. I want to tell you something. Did you know the word holy? The word holy. The first time it's mentioned in the Bible. Now you think I'll give you an example. Love. When's love mentioned? First time love is mentioned in the Bible. Do you know? Uh, you should. You should. I mean, you've heard me say it before. The first time the word love. All this generation, all they talk about is love, love, love. All the country songs, love. All the I love you, I love you. She's in love, she's in love. All the tabloids. I just left a movie star. She found love with somebody up there. They don't even know what the word love means. You know where the word love comes from? It's in Genesis 22. Where Abraham took his son, his only son. Lord, that'll make you shout. And was going to offer him up as a sacrifice up there on Mount Moriah. That same mountain they're fighting over there over right now. That's where the Dome of the Rock is. The Temple Mount. Same spot. And Abraham took that boy up there and it said, God said, take thine son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. You know what the word love means? A man loving his son enough to sacrifice him. First John said, herein is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and gave his son for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> Ain't that something? You would think love would be mentioned before 22 chapters. You'd think holy. Did you know the word holy ain't even mentioned in Genesis? Nothing's in there, so, nothing's in there said was holy. Not even the Spirit. Not even the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. And other thing, all, them, all that stuff that happened in Genesis, nothing's holy. And the first thing God ever calls holy. Let's see it. And the Lord, this is Exodus 3, 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him 
out of the midst of the bush. You're looking at your Bible and say it. Moses, Moses, Jeremiah, verse 5. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. First place. First time in the Bible the Lord said anything was holy, it was a piece of dirt. Y'all. Israel, a, a dirty, a, a dead piece of dirt. Look at that whole study on Israel, a deadly piece of dirt. And you know where he's standing there? Oh, there on Mount Sinai. That was part of Israel. On the e Egypt, on part of Egypt is part of actual the whole Holy Land. I'll show you in a little bit. And old, you know what he said? Moses, get your shoes off, boy. That ground you're standing on is holy. Isn't that something? You'd think of all the stuff in the world, the first thing God ever called holy, he didn't say the holy Sabbath, he didn't say the holy, there's holy, holy Christmas, holy Easter bunny, holy uh, Ramadan, holy day. He said that ground you're standing on is holy. Isn't that something? You know, he, you know why that's strange? Because back in Genesis, he cursed the ground. He told Adam, he said, the ground is cursed for your sake. But that spot, he said, that spot right there is holy. Man, Lord of mercy. That, you say, I don't mean nothing. Well, you keep studying a while and it does. The ground you're standing on is holy. You know what he told Joshua? When Joshua was getting ready to go in and possess that land, and he said, you go in there and you run all them kings out there. I think it's 30, 30, 32 or 3 kings uh, that is uh, just rooted in that place. And the Lord told Joshua, he said, you go in there and run every one of them out. And he said, take your shoes off, Joshua. You know what you got? You're standing on holy ground. And he, he did. And so uh, the ground whereon thou standest is holy. That's, that's, that's something. And before there ever was a Muslim, I mean, before Muhammad was ever even thought of, God gave that land to Israel. He did. It's an established fact. I'll show you here in a little bit. In the Bible, it's over and over and over and over and over. And I know people say, well, them Jews are wicked and full of you. You're absolutely right. Uh, they're enemies. They're enemies of God right now. For our, but they're beloved for the Father's sake. And so there's, there's the balance you got to get. Some people go off on them being God's enemies. Some people go overboard on them being God's earthly people. You can go too far either way. The, the, the Lord said in Romans 11, they're, they're enemies for our sake, but they're beloved for the Father's sake. And so... Uh, we're, we're going to look at that a little bit here in just a minute. And, and I hope that it'll be. You know when the word sinner, anybody in here know where sinner or sinners is first mentioned in the Bible? You ever know where the word sinner? I use a, well, was a sinner, wasn't Cain a sinner, wasn't Abel a sinner? Yeah, but the Lord don't call them that. You know where the word sinner is first mentioned? It's Genesis 13, 13. Oh, brother Danny, them chapter and verses added later. Yeah, they was, wasn't they? But it, the coincidences are too strong. That's why we, we, we understand that God had his hand on the, on the translation of the King James Bible. That's why he didn't let one person do it. One person couldn't have done that. Forty of them, he put all the works together. Bam! Finished product. Stamped it. Purified seven times. Final word that he said. 400 years before the second coming. God never said a word 400 years before the first coming. From Malachi or Second Chronicles to, Ma to John the Baptist. God never said a word from, uh, uh, from 400 years before the first coming. God never added unto it 400 years before the second coming. Just uh, over and over and over. You know what the word sinners in Genesis 13, 13? It said the men of Sodom. <whistles> if I was in that lifestyle, I'd start saying the first time God ever called anybody a sinner. It was Sodom and Gomorrah. I didn't write it. That's why you won't hear the news media talk about it. You will never hear them talk on the news about Ishmael. Abraham's son and uh, I, Ishmael and Jacob. Uh, Jacob and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ishmael. Abraham's had two sons. Isaac, son of promise. Ishmael, son of the flesh. By Hagar, the Egyptian uh, handmaid. And uh, they, they've been fighting ever since. And Galatians chapter 4 tells you that. They've been fighting ever since. I'll talk a lot about that in, in just a few minutes. But um, this, this thing of first mention 
is very, very, very interesting in the fact that what they're fighting over there this morning is the Muslims believe it's their land and the, the Jews believe it's their land. And they, neither one of them going to give in. And all the peace treaties in the world won't make them happy because Bin Laden said this. Bin Laden said, there will never be peace in Israel as long as one Jew's there and there's one Muslim alive. That's what he said. They'll never, never. We're not giving up an inch of it. Not an inch. And the Jews feel the same way. This is our land from God and we ain't giving up an inch. And buddy, that's why you have more. You, you think, you know, Jerusalem has been attacked. I'll, I'll, I'll say this in a little bit too. Jerusalem has been attacked over 50 times. Did you know that Jerusalem has been destroyed twice, been besieged 20 something times? One city. One city. And it's, you know what Jerusalem means? City of peace. <laughs> shalom, shalom means peace. Jeru, shalom. Jerusalem means a city of peace. And people say, well, that's crazy. How in the world? Well, you just hang around a while. Hang around a while. One day Jesus will sit on that very spot and reign for a thousand years. Sure will. That's what the Bible says. Unclog your mind, brother. Get, get in the book. Get in the book. He'll, he'll reign, sit there on that spot. And personally, I think David will sit there forever after the millennium. I, can't, I think a lot of scriptures indicate that. Or Jesus will be with us in the new city that come down from God out of heaven. Um, that, that one spot, buddy, that's the most fought over piece of land in the whole world. That's where history began. That's where history ends. Right there. And they're fighting over it this morning. Uh, Ishmael. And, uh, and uh, he said Abraham had two sons. One by a hand, hand bond woman. One by the free woman. And they've been fighting ever since. And that's where... Uh, did you know that there are a large majority of Muslims who believe when Abraham went up there on that mount that he took Ishmael? Quran don't say that, but a large majority of them, like them Sunni Muslims, whatever they call, whatever they call them, believe it was Ishmael Abraham took up there. And what's his name? Um, Muhammad and all them guys believe that they, they are direct, and they probably are, descendants of Ishmael. And old, old uh, Saddam Hussein believes he was a direct descendant from Nebuchadnezzar. He thought he was Nebuchadnezzar. He really did. Saddam Hussein believed he was Nebuchadnezzar. And come on, to take the Jews captive, take them to Babylon, and get them out of there. They're fighting over that land. They're fighting over that one spot of ground that the Bible calls a holy. People say, oh, they're just religious people call it the holy land. No, they didn't. God called it holy in the Bible more than once. And so... Uh, we're going we're to study out here in just a little bit this morning. Uh, we'll talk, I'm briefly go over what I've said and give you a whole lot more. Philistia, Philistine, uh, actually there's no such thing as a, as a state of Palestine. Palestine never been a state. It, it's, uh, it's always been an organization or a group. There's a state of Israel. And we'll go over some of the wars and stuff that's been fought there. Now don't get me wrong. I am not Jumping on the bandwagon that's singing Israel's praises and saying they're right with God and they're holy. They ain't. They're wicked and backslid and out of the will of God. Uh, but that's got nothing to do with the Bible and God's promises. Got nothing to do with it. You give the Lord time. He'll straighten them out one of these days. That's what's happened during the tribulation. You know what they call the tribulation in the Bible? Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. That's Israel. The name Jacob means Israel. Same word. It changed his name to Israel. And Jacob's trouble, buddy. Jacob's trouble. Uh, Israel's trouble. And son, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, that Holocaust was bad, but it ain't nothing like what's coming in Revelation 14, 15, 16. Long in there. Good night in the morning, y'all. Uh, it, it's really, 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 really sad. Uh, let me show you one verse of Scripture, Jeremiah 30, and I'll show you one promise God gave them here. And I'm gonna, I ain't got much time left, but uh, I'll... Y'all got y'all got it slower so you could get it better than what the people during the preaching service would get it. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, right after is uh right before Ezekiel, I'm sorry. Jeremiah, look at Ch Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter number 30, and verse number 11. 
Let me show you what the Lord thinks of the UN. Uh, look at verse number 9. The great, look at verse 7. That day, that day. When you're reading Jeremiah and Isaiah, you watch out for that phrase, that day, that day, in that day, in that day. And almost every time, 70, 70 times in Isaiah, almost, and it's almost always a reference to the end, the tribulation period, God dealing with Israel during the tribulation. Look at verse number 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Not the Holocaust war, not the Arab-Israeli war, uh, not the Arab-Palestinian conflict. None is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be bad. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, verse 8, saith the Lord, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Verse 9. Here's a millennium, that's a millennium and after. But they shall serve their Lord, their God, and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. You say, that's symbolic. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The Lord said, I'm going to raise up David, and they're going, he's going to have that king. It's David's throne. That's what it says. That's what the Bible calls it. David's throne. And, and Jesus sat on it for a thousand years, and then probably David for the rest of the eternity. Now, look at, um, look at verse number 10. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, not Ishmael. Not Ishmael, descendant, Jacob. All the promises of God are through Jacob and those 12 tribes. I didn't write it. I'm just reporting it. Therefore, fear not, O my servant Jacob. That's the tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, not, not Islam. Not Ishmael, not Muhammad, Jacob and Israel. I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return. Remember them Jews going back to the homeland. And shall be in rest and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. Now that ain't happened yet. That ain't happened yet. It happened in part. But they still people making them afraid. Verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of what? All nations. United States, shot. Russia, shot. Japan, gone. Though I make a full end. England, nothing. Of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But you ain't going to get away with what you're doing. I'm going to beat the snot out of you. And so many... Hebrew words like that. But I will correct thee in measure and not leave thee altogether unpunished. You know why he done that? Because when he was here, they hated Jesus and they rejected him and they said, but be on us and on our children. Whew. They should have never said that. They should have never said that. But God said, I'll scatter all them other nations and I'll make a full end of them. But not you. I'll save you. See verse 7. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Now was that talking about regular Jacob? No he's dead and gone. Jacob and Israel the same word. The children of Jacob. And his, his descendants. Making up the 12 tribes of Israel. Man told me one time. He said they ain't no Jews no more. They're all mixed up. And, and that is partly true. They're all mixed up now. You don't, you don't know what a, what a Jew is. And what's not a Jew. Uh, but the Bible said during the tribulation, the Lord's going to have 144,000 of them, 12,000 from each tribe, and that ain't the Jehovah Witnesses, because they're, they're all Jews and they're all virgins. <laughs> Amen? That's right. That ain't the Jehovah Witnesses. They're all Jews and they're all virgins. And he's going to raise them up. And you say, well, where in the world is he going to find 144 male Jewish virgin, virgins? Uh, he'll raise them up. He has to. He needs to. Remember that story in, in uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel over there, Ezekiel, where he said, can these bones live? And he said, I'll raise up your sons. Don't put nothing past what God can do. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead, many of the saints rose up with him and, and went back to heaven after that? You know, people criticize us uh, because of our views on the, on the rapture and preaching and everything. They said, no, you teach two second coming. There's the second coming. No, we don't. We teach one second coming, but it's in several parts. 
Just like the first coming was. The first coming was in several parts. Bethlehem. Twelve years old at the temple. Thirty years old beginning his ministry. Thirty-three crucified. Then he wouldn't let the disciples touch him after he rose from the dead. Same day he said, touch me. He went up, offered the blood on the, the sacrifice of the, of the altar, came back down and said, now put your hands right there, you can touch me. Same day. All of that, 33 and a half years, was the first coming. Amen? Sure was. And so uh, the, the Lord's got big plans. And when them, when them Jews said, his blood be on us and on our children, boy, the Lord said, you ought not to say that. <laughs> that was a mistake. Nevertheless, He'll be saved out of it, like the Bible says. Okay? All right. I'm going to stop right there just a second. Um, Philistia, that's Palestine. Uh, that's where the Philistine, that's what that word means. Palestine means Philistine. Palestine, same word. It, it, it evolved from that, uh, the Philistine. That's where Gath, that's where Goliath from, the big giant. What a picture. What a picture. What a picture. David killing that giant. Lord have mercy. All right. Uh, I'm going to stop right there now. We'll take just a little short break for the preaching service. Hope that you'll make our visitors welcome here this morning. We probably will have visitors here today that because of the big day last week. And I didn't get to tell you all the good stuff and last week. Lord, there's a bunch of people got saved. I think 10 or 11 made profession of faith in junior church. And we just had a, we just had a, a, a big time in the Lord. Uh, uh, don't, don't, so don't. Don't forget to make folks welcome here. We've got five minutes or so, okay? All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you for the word of God. It's quick and powerful and sharper than the two-edged sword. I pray that you bless us this morning. Help us to understand and give us understanding and, and compassion for everybody in this whole world. Oh, God, I pray, Father. Lord, I'm, uh, you said uh, a short work you're going to make on this earth. And, Lord, I pray that uh, you even so come quickly the last prayer in the Bible. Lord, I pray that you'd take us home to be with you. Never, 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 never. Have you in this service this morning? Bless every person that walks in these doors. Save that one which is lost.